Eternal Father, please speak to us this afternoon. Shine your light upon us. Let your word prosper. And stir our hearts up to do what is right in your sight. Blessed be the name of the Lord our God. <clears throat> Jesus' mighty name we pray. Please let your amen be very, very sound. I read to you from Psalms 100, Psalms 100, and I read verse 4, and I will read from 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 18. The 1 Thessalonians, the text will be taken from the New Living Translation. The Psalms 100, verse 4, shall be from the New King James Version. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving, and into his courts with praise. Be thankful to him and bless his name. Amen. Number two, First Thessalonians chapter five, verse eighteen. He said, "Be thankful in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you, who belong to Christ Jesus." Amen. What I deduce from those two verses of Scripture is that essentially you should live a life of thanksgiving. Amen. You should do what? Live a life of thanks. Be thankful in all circumstances. Be thankful in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you. And so whether you enter to the place of prayer or seeking his face or come to worship, let thanksgiving be the first thing that you will do. And so because we say that this is a life mandate for us and that we have been called to live a life of thanksgiving, the message will be titled, The Key to a Life of Thanksgiving. Amen. The Key to a Life of Thanksgiving. I didn't say keys, but I said key. Uh, most of the times, you probably will have noticed that a door has only one key. I'm not talking about copies. And so, we complicate things sometimes as believers. So generally in life, we have too many things we suggest to do. And so we don't even know which one to do. And the keys are essentially revelations. Essentially revelations that God has given. In Matthew chapter 16, beginning from verse 13 to 20, the Lord Jesus Christ was asking the disciples, he says, what do you think people call me? Eventually, God gave Peter a revelation. And he said, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. And the Lord Jesus Christ said, flesh and blood has not revealed this unto you. And in then concluded, I said, I will give you the keys of the kingdom. In that case, keys means that there will be many keys given unto you to open different doors. There's a door called the door of thanksgiving. And there is a key to thanksgiving. Amen. There's just one key to thanksgiving. Whether you ask a master key or whatever, master key does not open all doors. I hope you are aware of that. Master key does what? Opens a group of doors. So you can't have a flat key and you say you have a master key that is a round key. You've seen those kind of keys before? I think I have one in my pocket for my office. I didn't remember. You know, you see this kind of key? And you can't use to open a union key. You know union. Master or no master. So be aware that there's only one key. I'm laying the fast so that you don't go around seeing, seeking how you will live a life of thanksgiving. You will just take this revelation into mind and you will leave the revelation, and the Lord will help you and I in Jesus' name. I say, let you may be very sad today. Amen. Today is a day of celebration, amen. amen. Because it's going to be a rehearsal for the greater celebration coming your way this year. Amen. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And what is that key? Is that revelation that will help you to live a life of thanksgiving? Hmm. It's going to be a revelation that I call a revelation of I'm helped or helped. I will explain myself. That is, as you go through life, because I call it a paradigm, a mindset. If a person will have a mindset that whatever I am, wherever I am, there's one thing that is underlying it is the word helped. May the banner over your head be called help them. You could see the man of God leading us in worship this morning. Anytime, you remember where it's coming from. Every time, every time, every time. The reason is that over his head, you must have seen his written word, helped. And that should be over your own head. It's over my head. 
I don't go very far before I tell you where I was coming from. I knew where the Lord picked me from. So, believer, child of God, number one thing that will help you to constantly thank God is to remember that you are what? You are what? You are what? I'm not even talking about you will be helped, that you are. Because it's the help of yesterday that brought you to today. If you didn't remember the help of yesterday, forget about tomorrow. You won't even bother to ask for help tomorrow. Your life should be tagged, helped. Anywhere you go, anybody you see, and they say, ah, what's wrong with you? They say, ah, it's because I am. And that must be ingrained into our heart. But how can that be? Because it's wanted to say it with our mouths and to leave it. You see, the heart and the mouth, they are well connected, no matter how well you disguise it. Where was uh, Ufoma when she was testifying this morning? Where is the woman? Uh-huh. <laughs> mm. You see, when she said, I just want to connect that for you. When she said, he still the shark me. Translated into English, mean I'm still excited about him. Do you know what she did? I can't call elders to come and be partner with me in acting. Please come. Please. I need to be careful those that I call. I remember the position. I think she was standing like that. Uh, uh, Obaru. Where's Obaru? Where are they? Uh, he's on the, Obaru was standing like that. He said, he's still the shadow. They were looking at each other's face. The unknown unto her, she did like that. Did you see her? Uh, God bless you, man. What is inside we manifest outside. That's why I'm playing emphasis on the fact that if something changes on the inside of you, there will be no struggle for the outside. The challenge we have is that we don't take care of our paradigm, we don't take off our mindset, and therefore we start living double. Eventually, they will discover and find us out. They discover that we are really not humble, we are really not thankful, we are really not submissive unto God, we have our own project me agenda, but if you have the inside chain based on some particular things, you will find yourself being okay. Am I making sense there? And so very quickly, I'll tell you three things that you need to know about yourself that will help you to have the mantle or the banner or the badge or the chain or whatever you call it, hung around your neck, over your head, everywhere that is tagged what? Because therein lies the people that are able to thank God all the time. Number one, you must adopt this statement. And that statement is, I am nothing. Now, I don't want you to qualify. Once you qualify, you lose the insert. You say, I'm nothing without God. Mm, eh, I can't come without. Leave that for now. Settle for the primary statement. I am what? That's our problem. We don't let that sink in before we start saying, hey, if not for God. Yes, we know if not for God. But primarily, if you trace it back, 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 until you go to the deepest aspect of it, go to the very foundation of it, the truth is that what I am, man. Unless you believe that, you will find yourself arrogating unto yourself what does not belong. In 2 Samuel chapter 7, verse 18, 2 Samuel chapter 7, verse 18, number one statement, I'm nothing. You need to adopt that. You need to believe that. You need to live that. Don't worry about the, uh, oh yes, God is taking you. I know that. But remember, ever, ever, never to forget. Then King David. You know, David, uh, this king has been a very, very strong influence in my life of recent as I'm studying more. Went in and sat before the Lord. And we can spend the whole day on that verse. He will have fallen on his face. No. He will have stood. No. You know, when somebody sits, you know, you just sit down like that. It was as if something dropped him right there. And he said, when God told him where I was taking him and his generation, who am I? What? Oh, Lord God. And what is my house that you have done? You have helped me this far. Who am I? 
It's a rhetorical question. You know the answer to that? Who am I? Nobody. Nothing. Nothing. The only sin of human beings is the one we inherited from Satan. I will never ever stop. I believe that with all my heart. The only sin of man is the one we took from Satan. What's that sin? Pride. Every other thing springs from it. You cheat people because you think that uh, you can steal from them or you can, you know, falsify documents or whatever, knowing that they are stupid or they won't. It's pride. Everything. Leave that for another day. Don't forget, brethren, I, I speak of myself. I'm nothing. And I know it. If you go to Isaiah chapter 2, verse 22. Isaiah chapter 2, verse 22. God spoke to Isaiah and he said something. I'll move from that point very quickly. It's Thanksgiving Sunday. We need plenty of time to worship and praise him. He says, Sever yourselves from such a man whose breath is in his for of what I can't see. I don't know about you. I don't worry. It's not a depressing message. It's a realistic message for you. Uh, the more a person sees himself the way God sees him, as nobody, God can pick the person up. We don't say it long enough. I'm, I'm serious. Because years have passed. We've used so many motivational messages on the pulpit in life. And we don't seem to recognize that God is looking for those who are genuinely down there for him to pick them up. Sever yourself from such a man whose breath is in us. Do you know what that means? The Bible is saying that human beings, we are so fickle, we are so frail. In a moment like that, we are gone. It's not chronological age that is making me to revise my view. I think it's more of a spiritual age. Day by day, I just see how ordinary we are. I've called it to the point in this day that whatever I have or whatever, I don't even asp I aspire, but I see it so small that I say that here today, not there tomorrow. We are just mortals. May our eyes be opened. That all, all our pursuing, all our chasing, we will see the temporariness of life and the bigness of God. We will see that God dominates everything. Those that were yesterday, they are no longer today. Live today well. Are you listening to me? Serve God today well. Are you listening to me? But I beg of you, put no much value on it. The strongest of all, we are just like vapor. And when we realize that, for every day we live, we will be thankful unto him. Hallelujah. Amen. Let's move on very quickly. What's number one thing that you must believe that will help you to have that banner over your head? What is it? I am. A... Number two, I can do nothing. It's one thing to be nothing. It's another thing not to be able to do. And the scripture is replete with example of that. I just let the scripture speak for itself. John chapter 5 verse 30. Very quickly, please. John chapter 5 verse 30. Um, you need to move with me. Just let the scripture speak in those ones. Hallelujah. I can of myself do nothing. Who said that? Ah, you should know. Who said that? I can of myself what? If Jesus can do nothing, what can you do? <laughs> Did I tell you how arrogant we are as human beings? <laughs> That's Jesus. I'm not talking of David. I can of myself. What? As I hear, I judge. And my judgment is because I do not seek my own will, but the will of the Father who sent me. That's what I was talking about, the temporariness of life. Let everything be about God. He said it was not about me. That's the Son of God who came to die. Who ministry, which ministry comes close to that? Which life comes close to that? He said, even all that I live just to glorify God. Because when you talk about this man, the human man, is nothing. John chapter 8 verse 28, he repeats it there. John chapter 8 verse 28. Let's quickly read that one and then let's take our own there. John chapter 8 verse 28. Is it up to uh, verse 28 there or not? All right. Then Jesus said to them, when you lift up the son of man, then you will know that I am here and that I do what? I what? But as my father taught me, I speak what? I was with... Uh, they came okay this morning in his workers in training class. And they asked me a question. They asked me, said, Pastor, how are you doing it? Uh, what about uh? You know, my answer was honestly straightforward 
you know what? It's God. But I had in my mind, anyway, that I would tell them what God teaches me or taught me or guided me to do. It's all about what God is doing through us. When you remember that, you will ever be thankful unto him. Am I making sense there? Uh-huh. Then, after Jesus has spoken about himself, because one of the principles of our Lord Jesus Christ, he never asked anyone to do what he has not done, what he will not do. And if I leader, and all of us, we are leaders in one form or another. Mother, you are leading your children. Father, you are leading your family. Brother, you are leading your former siblings, your other siblings. Everybody, we are leading in one form or another. Our number one rule is I don't ask people to do what we not do. Don't put a burden on somebody. So Jesus Christ first settled it, mentioned at least twice, and I can count to three other times that he mentioned this issue of I can do nothing of myself. I depend on God. Whatever judgment I have. Then he came unto us in John chapter 15 verse 5. The one you know very well. John chapter 15 verse 5. He then he leveraged onto that. Once you know this today, your lifting will be quicker. Your lifting will be this month. Your struggle will stop. Are you listening to me? Your struggle will stop. Thank God for all the testimonies today. Wonderful testimonies, serial. One thing after another, one thing after another. Thank God he came back to give thanks unto God. I am the vine, you are what? He who abides in me and I in him. Yes? Read the last part with me. Want to go, everybody? For without me, Jesus, you can what? A few things? Nothing. But what about the unbelievers? But they were able to do things. They do it because God allowed them to. The day he takes the plug out, no human being can do a thing. All good and perfect, James chapter 1 verse 17, all good and perfect, we come from above, from the Father of life, in whom there is no variableness, nor any shadow of, every good gift, there's nobody on earth. Yeah, you will do it, you can breathe now. Remember that man, he said, now soul, take your rest, and do whatever you want to do. He said, thou fool, uh-huh. today, what? Your breath shall be required from you. I want to leave a legacy. You know the legacy? Legacy of grace, of humility and grace. If I can get half of this place to constant believe that seriously, God will use us to change nations. The problem is that we don't believe it. There are too many struggle. We have not learned to lean on the Lord. And it's going to be difficult because when we are being led by people and we're not talking about our topmost echelon now. Most of us are around, you know, one for another leading you because people are people that have probably done one or two things in the world and we look at them, we see those achievements and even they said the seed of achievement and before you know it, we take our eyes away from God. That's why some, Jesus insisted I was not going to choose a particular rabbi, he chose the lowest of the world. He only started having mercy recently, started picking people that have got some background. He never take anybody with it purposely. That's what the apostle was saying. He saw himself as an exception. Apostle Paul. He said, have we not seen the gospel? First Corinthians chapter 1. Not many rich, you remember? Not many noble were chosen. Brother, if you are chosen now, it's special grace. Oh. oh, God was not choosing them before. If you are chosen now, he doesn't choose people like before. I'm telling you. He made sure he chose the dread. But he now wants us, have not helped us thus far in life to remember that he brought us this far. It's not by power, nor by my Sister, God has brought you this far. Shall we believe that with all our heart? We can do nothing without him. Then you give him thanks. Finally. Hallelujah. Mm. I hope you will thank him well today. Mm. I hope you will thank him. I believe God for something special here today. I hope I will see it. Don't worry. I hope I will see it. I pray for it. I think he showed me a little bit of snippet of it. But I pray I will see it today. Number three, if it's Wednesday, I will have asked you what it will be, but I will tell you, I need help. <laughs> that one is obvious, isn't it? If you are nothing, yes. Uh-huh. Number two, if and you want to be something, at least, don't you? You want to do something, don't you? 
<laughs> but I'm not going to leave it that I'm nothing. I'm not going to leave that I can do nothing. You want to be somebody? You want to do something? How will you be it? I need help. If you have that in your mind, you are sorted. Oh, God will show us help. Man. Is that Psalm 46? Let's read from verse 2. I hope it's Psalm 46. I tend to miss verse 46 and 40. 40. Put it there for me, please. Uh, ah, let me check my reference. Hallelujah. Mm. We will read that together and then we'll begin to give thanks unto the Lord. Amen and amen. Oh, we serve a great God. It's actually Psalm 124. Mm. Okay. Psalm 124. We will read that together. And then I will say one or two things, and then we will start giving praise to God again. Let's read together one, two, go. Let, let, me, let me do something different today. Shall we please rise up to read that one? The reason why we rise up to read scripture is also like making a confession before all the realms of existence. That let them hear it in heavens, let them hear it on earth, let them hear it under the earth. That is our confession. Shall we all read together? Number one, two, go. If it, it's not on the screen yet, hold on, hold on. Let's wait for them. Let's wait for them. Can we please put Psalm 124 on the screen, please? One, two, go. Shall we? If it are not. Stop, please. Shall we please personalize it so that we don't need to because we will have read through first and then do it again. You can manage to personalize, can't you? Without prompting. Can we go back to verse 1 again if we may please? Verse 1. One, two, go everybody. If it are not... Uh-huh. Yes. Yes. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Mm. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Absolutely. The snare is broken. And I've escaped. My help. Is in the name of the Lord. What made verses 1 to 7 possible? Verse 8. My help is in the name of the Lord. That's what made it possible. Will you remember today? Please be sister for a little while. God bless you. Mm. We will remember where he brought us from. And then we will take time to praise him paradoxically. In spite of what you are going through, you will praise him. In spite of what you are going through, you will give him thanks. You will remember that it is his help that has brought you this far. We will remember. Because we are not ungrateful children. We are children who know what God has done and who with all sense of humility trust in him for greater things for tomorrow. I'd like you to please bow down your head for a little while. We will rise up in a moment, purposely left enough time for us to do the needful. It's Thanksgiving Sunday. It's not so much a day of long preaching. I just want you to ask the Lord, strangely, you'll be surprised, for forgiveness. For those moments when you have not been as grateful as you ought to be. Thank him now for what he has done for you, that irrespective, in spite of your feelings, 
is still been helping you. Waters rose, the waters did not cover us. The storm blew. Don't want just a quick Thanksgiving message that will not sink deep. But I believe the Lord, by the help of his Holy Spirit, has spoken to you. And by his grace, in a moment you will rise up to praise him and praise him properly. Thank him properly. I remember all you done for me. I'm a grateful child. How can I forget? Oh, how you changed my life. I will not forget. Do we know it? I remember all you done for me. I'm a grateful child. How can I forget? Oh, how you changed my life. I will not forget. Holy Father, we thank you for what you've done. In spite of all our feelings, you have helped us. You've kept us. We come back to say thank you. We thank you. We remember how you made a way. We remember, we remember. And we say thank you, Jesus. I'd like all of us to please, whichever way you feel comfortable to do it. After all, David sat down and did his own. But if it's more convenient and more expressive for you, you can stand up, you can dance. Like us to make not just a vocal noise, but a heartfelt noise. And so it should be better. If it's audible, the thanksgiving that you will give, <laughs> if it's something that you can hear yourself say. And so for the next two minutes, I want us to do that before I pray for us. Speak blessing over us and trust God for greater days ahead of us. So I want all of us to lift our voices. As many as can rise up, rise on your feet, please. And in your own words, begin to say, Lord, I thank you for where you brought me from. I know it does not matter. You may have come, you may have been born with silver spoon in your mouth, but I tell you, in spite of that silver spoon, there are many that were born with you like that, and they never made anything of their lives. In fact, the silver spoon was their own undoing. Yes, absolutely. But you did not somehow end up, you know, doing some terrible things that could have held you down. You did not go down the route of self-abuse in which you could not rise up. It would be good to hear your own voice as you say, Father, I thank you. You can help people by just have some music in the background, but please speak up. Let God hear you. Speak up. Are you ashamed to speak of what the Lord has done for you? I have it on record. I have it on the microphone. Yours is not rec recorded. How you took me, oh Lord, from three near-death experiences, you deliver me. I went into the wrong group, Lord. You did not allow me to go down that rise. You saved me just in time. I thank you. When I made the wrong turns, I thank you. Thank him right now. Give him praise. Don't let me my voice. Let my voice just be a cover for yours. You should be able to speak out and speak loud. Let something start in your heart. I know for sure I'm nothing. I know for sure I can do nothing of my strength. Oh, but the Lord, you are being my help. Oh Lord, let your spirit help your people right now to so give you quality for one that shall be recorded in the annals of the books of life. When the books are being opened and when the altar is being checked on, they will see the incense of our praise rising up unto you. I thank you. I thank you, Father. I thank you. I thank you. Your daughter opened the service this morning was saying that we thank God that we could walk in here today. I thank God for my sanity. I have not taken it for granted, oh God, I thank you. I thank you, Lord, for my health, threatened many times, but you have kept me, oh God. I thank you, my Father, that 
God did not allow me to be brought to shame. I thank you. I thank you for the ministry you've given up to me. And I thank you that you have helped me in every step of the way. When I'm so afraid, Lord, you remove my fear and you give me the confidence to stand before your people. I thank you in the vocation that you allow me to go and study and walk in before you call me. I thank you that I passed those exams not because I studied very hard. I know I played, but you helped me, Lord. I thank you. Oh, Lord, I thank you. I hope somebody is thanking the Lord. Oh, Lord, I thank you. I thank you. There should be no limit on your expression of what you're going to thank the Lord for. Mighty you are, oh God. Who is like you, O oh Lord, our God, glorious in holiness, fearful in praises, doing wonders, I thank you. Thank you for my relationships, O oh God, for the family you born me into. Thank you for all the strength and the weaknesses. Thank you, Lord, for the family that you have established for me, O oh God. For all our strength and weaknesses, we thank you. We magnify you, oh God. We're not going to rush this one. You will open your own mouth and speak. Don't wait for the pastor. Don't wait for the priest to come and lead us again. It's your own be time with your maker. Use it well. Use it well. Who knows? You can say, you could end up saying something as David said, and his destiny changed forever. Who knows? You can help do something as Abraham did, and his destiny changed forever. Oh, we give you thanks, oh Jesus. Send a labo shekere a labo send a libro. We give you glory, Lord. We thank you, Father. Oh. Who are we, oh Lord, that you have shown us so much kindness? Who are we, oh Lord, that you have shown us so much love? Oh, you are a faithful God. We thank you today. Not some wishy-washy. Let's just give him something and move on to the next one. No, we've come to properly thank you today. Genuinely thank you. Oh, what a kind father you are, oh God. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. I thank you, Lord. We thank you. Mm. Oh, mighty God, we thank you. Is it be see how far you brought me? Sing it like believers. 
Father, we lift our hands unto you in total surrender. We are nothing without you. We can do nothing without you. And we really need your help for the future. For all the help we've received, we say thank you, Lord. Speak over your children, over my life, over all our lives. This month of August, the year of our Lord, 2024, we shall receive great help as we've never received before. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We say one more time, Lord, as we shall offer you special thanksgiving today in our materials, in our time, in our body. Let this month be a month of great help in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And let your name be praised forever. Who can know or who has known or who will ever know how far God can help a man? When you choose to help a person, they always end up far beyond human expectation. When you really help a person, people will wonder. That's why we are asking for your help. So this month, Lord, please help us and make us marvelous in the name of the Lord Jesus. That's our only request. And we shall continue to carry the banner over our head. And that banner shall be called helped. And therein, indeed, glorious King Ezebube, truly and indeed, it shall be said that you are mighty God in our lives. We worship you, Lord. To you be the honor. To you be the glory. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen.